All right, I just started it. Hello, everybody. Taking you on a first time bushwhack somewhere with my bud here. First time down here. First time down here. We, uh, I'm putting my pack on right now. There's a story as to why we're even here. So I'll tell you that story over some time. <laughs> but it basically starts with, I was unhappy with AT&T. And one thing led to another, to another, to another, to another, to another. And then here we are. So I thought you guys would enjoy maybe seeing, well, we just went through a big jungle to get down here over there. Wow, it was something else. And uh, not much for your g viewing pleasure. I will admit to that. So I wanted to wait until we got to some area where you'd be able to see what we're doing. So at the moment, we're just looking for any kind of track that we can get down. And this looks like a deer track. Whoa. Got some pretty severe side sloping going on. And there's a lot of leaves that makes it slippery. But essentially, what we discovered, well, I'll tell you the story. So, on our hikes, I normally put my phone into uh, airplane mode so that I don't use any internet because AT&T is really stingy. They have, you know, only so many data minutes you can use before you start getting billed. And uh, believe it or not, I ran out of minutes at home because my wireless router was refusing to give an IP address to my phone for some reason. So I was just like using my phone to watch some YouTube videos all my financial channels that I watch. And uh, I went beyond my minutes. And uh, I got billed pretty heavily for it one month. And that really torqued me off. Hey dude, I think we should go down to the bottom. Well, we're not going down at the same rate that the creek is going down. So we get to a place like this and then we're really high up. Yeah, I know. But up here, you know, you could break a leg if you fall. And that's what I think about the most is is injury. So uh, I forget where I was at with my story, but um, using my minutes and getting pretty torqued off about it. So my buddy here, he keeps like gloating about uh, how he doesn't pay extra minutes and on some of the hikes that we're on, he was getting better cell phone coverage than I was. And he was using T-Mobile. And he has a flat, whoa, he has a flat rate. And uh, so I said, well, I'll look into it. <laughs> Well, I looked into it, and uh, 
while I was on the phone. While I was on the phone with uh, T-Mobile, I uh, see I've been with AT&T so long. I was actually with them initially as Singular, but Singular AT&T was bankrupt. I don't know if you remember that. I mean, we're going back quite a number of years now. But uh, I had joined Singular because it was the most advanced digital network on the planet at the time. Uh, even more than Sprint. Now, Sprint was the most advanced digital before them. Verizon had the most coverage, but they didn't have the most digital. So, getting stuck on some vines. So I never was a Verizon customer because I didn't want to go through um, a non-digital network back in 2000, I think is what it was. So I got on Sprint, but then uh, had a billing issue with Sprint and they, they uh, charged me for things that I shouldn't have been charged for. And so I left them and that's when I went to Singular. After I joined Singular, they switch over, or they buy AT&T. It was, I don't know, maybe about a year, or two years after, or three years after. It was a long time ago. And they bought AT&T just for the name. So, I, uh, I stayed on, but I noticed over time, they became very uh, monolithic-like, like how, oh, look at this, nice little, nice little, uh, oh, it's burned out, nice little cave for some kind of animal, perhaps. Anyway, uh, long story short, uh, you know, they're just so big, they don't really care so much about their customers. They're stingy with their minutes, etc., etc. I remember um, I was unable to turn off paging back in the day, and AT&T was charging per page. And uh, I had some spammers that were paging me. I would block them as fast as I could, but they would still page through. I don't know, AT&T, I think they did that just so they could make more money. It really torqued me off, but eventually they finally got with it. These, phone companies, man, they're so, uh, at least my, here I am ranting about AT&T so long, but you get the gist of it. I don't like AT&T. So I called T-Mobile and my biggest question was, can I uh, use my phone that I got from AT&T on their network? What do you think this is? Right here. It looks a little too, uh, -like cut. yeah, too straight, doesn't it? I don't think it is though, but that's why I walked over here is because I saw that. Anyway, long story short, uh, the T-Mobile guy says, oh no, it's so simple. You can change the SIM card yourself. I'm like, really? This is a waterproof phone. Now I gotta figure out how to get through this. I think we can go right straight down. 
at least for a while. So, the, I said, well, how do you do that? Because I know the phone is waterproof, you can't open the case. He goes, oh yeah, you can open it, don't worry. You can do it yourself. It's so simple. You just stick a pin in the hole next to the slot. And I'm like, what slot is he talking about? I didn't know that there was a tray at the top of my Galaxy, um, my Samsung Galaxy S9 phone. I do now, but I was plugging and plugging away on the on the bottom of the case with a pin. And uh, I noticed, um, like when I, I bought a new, um, see one of these, a unicorn beetle case. I bought a new one for my phone recently. And when I changed my phone out, because the other one was broken and had scratches. And uh, it, uh, we can get through here. My buddy's gonna go up on the top side while I, whoa, <laughs> while I stubbornly try not to fall. Anyway, I discovered there was a bulge on the back side of the case when I changed my, uh... wow, I'm stuck here. These vines are incredible. They're almost as strong as twine. Let me get back up here. Oh. It's a big step for me. I don't have long legs like my buddy. So, uh, anyway, when I bought the phone, it was, you know, flat as a pancake, but had a bulge in it. So while I was trying to finagle, uh, poking a pin, I was putting it in the wrong hole, basically. And nothing was happening. And uh, all of a sudden, a corner of the case popped up, rendering it no longer uh, waterproof. Well, in error, I thought that that was how you open it up. So I went online, because it wouldn't pull up really easily. It has some kind of glue or uh, sticker tape of some kind keeping it down. And uh, so I went online, found some videos on how to open it up all the way. Once I did that, I saw that the battery inside had a plastic uh, sheath around it and it was filled with gases, like a balloon. And that's what was poking back on the, on the, uh, the case. So um, hey, maybe I should tie something right here. I'll tie a, a quickie here. I don't have much tape with me today. I'm starting to run out. So I use small ones now and I tie it to the small stuff because we've discovered that some critters like this red stuff. And uh, so if you put it on anything big, where they can scramble up and hang on to. They get up to it and they eat it. It makes them high. Believe it or not, polyvinyl chloride does that. A little tasty little meal for them. So, wow.
<laughs> That's so pleasing. Okay, let's get down. So anyway, I found out that the case wouldn't go back together, the battery's inflated, and I, I wound up in calling the T-Mobile guy again and saying, hey, look what happened to my phone. Um, I don't think it'll ever be waterproof again. So that doesn't really matter. I said, it matters to me because where I go hiking to, I could be in a rainstorm, I could be submerged in a creek, and my last phone, wow, was destroyed by a, a two-second oops in the San Carpoforo River. I just, we were crossing, I fell in waist deep and fell over and my phone dipped down, got wet and it was killed like almost instantly. So I don't, uh, I don't want to mess around with non-water, this is all poison oak, not all of it, there's some of this is oak, but what I'm pushing away is poison oak. It's uh, dormant right now. Long story short, long story longer, I called AT&T's insurance program and got a replacement phone. I'm looking down here and I see a, a closer route down, but I don't, uh, well, but that's where, that's where it showed that the, that the ancient road went or the ancient trail went. It didn't show it up on the sides. And if it was, we would be able to see something you would think. I'm jumping too far ahead of the story while I'm talking to my buddy here. You don't know the whole story. So I'll try to finish it real soon here. I got a new phone that came the next morning. And I went to transfer from my old phone. Whoa, oh, ow, 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 ow. I think I just bruised my knee. Samsung uh, synchronizer, they got this syn synchronizer program and uh, I'm gonna go down. This sideways stuff, this side sloping stuff is, uh, almost gives me a heart attack when I, when I can't get through it quickly. So, uh, back to the Samsung synchronizer. It, um, it works pretty well. It got all my programs over and it got all my settings except for like uh, fingerprints and, um, and my bank. It didn't have my login accounts, things like that, but no big deal. I could redo that easy. But the program that I rely on for navigating out in places like this is called Backcountry Navigator. And 
that program, my all my track, they didn't transfer. And the maps did not transfer as well. So, I, uh, I start getting in a panic because I can't use my old phone anymore. And, uh, and the maps aren't working. So I went onto the backcountry site and attempted to re-download the topo maps that I rely on the most which is ones that were published by Cal Topo, but they're USGS Topo maps. Now, these, you, uh, whoa, these USGS Topo maps, um, they show stuff that no other Topo map shows. My buddy doesn't like them because he doesn't think that they're good looking, I think. But I am addicted to the hidden history. And for example, we're here today because we're trying to follow some history. Although I did mention to him about a year or two years ago, maybe, when we were going through this area up, way upstairs, off of this fire road, I mentioned that this looks kind of interesting. We should go down and check it out sometime. But uh, anyway, this map shows tracks from like a, almost 100 years ago, at least from the 1930s, because it led me to this mountain peak that we... Uh, it took us over a year to get to. We had to cut a trail. Um, it was very rewarding when we got there. It was a nice ocean view. And then we decided to go past it, the peak. Uh, that peak is actually was a, uh, a, a, a site, a location for the National Geodetic Survey in the Coastal Geodetic Survey Program. And it was last um, visited by um, the government back in the 1930s. So on our way out there, I discovered a whiskey bottle, likely left behind by one of the NGS workers, surveyors. And it's like a prized possession of mine. Now, it's, it's a worthless bottle. It's, I researched the bottle, and it is it only came from the 1930s. So I'm, I'm sure that, that it's that, that old. So uh, I'm going to go under it. So uh, I have a number of relics that we've that I've obtained through our um, adventuring, and uh, pretty soon I'm going to need a a display cabinet to show off all my possessions. I have some old signs. Old forestry signs that, whoa, got a, I got a nail from the 1800s from Manuel Dutra's old cabin, or Old Man Dutra, as a local local historian Mary Baldwin in Big Sur of the Baldwin Ranch. That's what she called him. A 
another buddy of mine and I were out um, backpacking around and I brought him to the site of Dutcher's old homestead and showed him where I found the foundation stones to his cabin from the 1800s. And my buddy says, oh, you know, a lot of times when they're building them, they, a nail falls or something. And uh, so I'm gonna pull up the stone here. I'm like, no, leave it alone. <laughs> I didn't want to disturb it. But too late, he had already pulled it up. And underneath it was a nail. It was a nice one too. He kept that. And then we kept poking around. Can you take a picture of me? Yeah, sure. Oh, crap, you breathe in. You breathing in crap? I guess so. I'm breathing in dirty air. Probably a little bit crap on too. Don't go too far away. I thought you want a picture of your backside? Oh, well, come come back and then I'll take one. Hang on, let me get a little closer. You're so dinky in this. Yeah. All right. Very good. So, um, anyway. Finding relics is really, uh, it makes my day. So the deal is, the deal is, uh, I'm gonna jump fast forward. I had some problems with the map. I couldn't download the, them anymore, right? because Cal Topo decided not to allow people to use their maps anymore, to license them. And that was done back in November. So, uh, so I started complaining to my friend about what was going on. And I don't know what to do. Um, we won't be able to figure out where to go in the future without that map. And he said, he says that he was using Gaia GPS. Huh? Oh. Remember we have walkie talkies. My buddy brought, bought some walkie-talkies. He bought three of them. One for his girlfriend, one for him, and one for me. So, anyway, uh, my buddy says, um, I, I said, I went to the Cal Topo site and it's $50 per year for a subscription. He says, don't go with Cal Topo. And I'm like, why? And he says, because they're, it's got a buggy program. He said, you should go with Gaia GPS. And I'm like, I looked at your Gaia GPS before and those, those topo maps don't, they don't have the USGS topo maps. And, he's, and he said, I think they do. So he was like looking around. He says, yeah, they do, but it doesn't look exactly the same. And then, uh, this is over the phone. So, um, then, oh, dude. This looks deceptively like a fence post, doesn't it? I think it's a fence post. Is it? Um, it's squared off. Is there any... Um, this was split. Nail holes or anything? 
I don't know. Let me uh, try to. It was it was split up. Look at this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, broken. Right that's not broken, that's axed. So see folks, this is why we're here, is to follow things like this. So basically, I, was, I met the place where my buddy said that um, he looked around and he saw some really old uh, USGS maps from, what was it, 1900? Yeah. 1900. 1900. And he said, hey. <laughs> so, you know, for like the last two and a half years, yeah. two and a half years, we've been building a trail to get down to the bottom of, of where this creek actually meets up to. Believe it or not. And he said, hey, on this map, I didn't see it, but he, but he was reporting over the phone. Hey, on this map, it shows that um, there's a road going down to where I last went. And I'm like, really? So he sent me a, he sent, I have to go giddy up on this. I'm gonna duck under here. Okay, so uh, yeah, he said that there was a road that shows up. I hope the camera is still aimed in the right way. And I saw it and it showed even a little cabin down at the very bottom. And interestingly enough, it didn't show any of the other fire roads or there are some private property amongst here and um, nobody really lives out here but there are um, there's a few people I've run into them on the fire road that accesses this area I've run into them nice people but they come out just to you know enjoy a nice summer day kind of thing with their family and they go to their their property uh, one of them said that they have a i get rid of this uh might be running and to break it. no i just didn't want it to get get on me whoa Okay, that's a nutcracker there. If I can get my foot down, there we go. That's slow going here. This is definitely not um, 20 minute mile territory. <laughs> sure we can do 20 minute a mile going uphill. But this is not 20 minute a mile even downhill. I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna go over here. So uh, that's why we're here today, is because he found uh, that old track. Now it's not a road, it's, it was actually a single dash line. As a matter of fact, do you wanna show them? Uh, you have it on your, um, are you still? Showing that layer. I mean, I have it easily accessible. Except uh, 1900 topo and now is a little bit off in terms of the exact. So you see that um, turquoise. Oh, we're, right, we're right on it now. Oh, we are? Okay, yeah, see? The dash line. Yeah. And we're heading towards where we were before. Oh, we're really not that far away now, huh? We're pretty close. We're yeah. like. What, um, less than a, like two thirds of a mile. Wow. Wait, I'm thinking let's do it. Well, yeah, but I want to make sure we can get back too without. We'll go back the other way. No. 
too far, too hard. Yeah, I, my water is left up. I left my water at the top. Oh, oh you left your water at the top. Yeah, I want to go back this way. Let's, let's still try to get there. Oh, geez, man, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty, uh, bold. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. So anyway, um, that's why we're here. And my biggest goal today would be to find a relic from that, but I don't think it was a, a road because it's a single dashed dotted line. So the dual dashed ones means it's a road. So I don't think we're going to find like an old radiator or hubcap or something like that. If anything, we'll find a, what is that? Just a shard. So anyway, now you see This is a real treat, folks. I normally don't take uh, videos of our first attempt anywhere, but I'm sharing this with you. I'm gonna end it now because uh, I wanna put it away. It's kind of wobbly on my head. I can feel it wobbling up and down when I take a step. And uh, I'm done with my story. If I find something of real interest, um, I'll bring that up later and film again. So, thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Make sure to go out and have some fun today. When you watch this video, I hope it it uh, inspires. inspires you to go out and scare up some of your own fun too. And go check out those old topo maps. They've got a wealth of, of information you won't find on anything modern, at least in this area, that's for sure. Maybe not in the national parks. But uh, this is not national park. It's it's government land, but it's not national park. But uh, you know, all these lands uh, they've been explored before, and you might find a sign of might find a sign of that in the midst of this uh, mire. It's like about 800 feet up there. Pretty steep. I wouldn't suggest climbing that. You'll be uh, two steps up or three steps back. Probably. Anyway. Alright, that's it guys. Talk to you later.